One thing I've found in my career is that no matter how good you are with the technology, when you're dealing with a customer and they say, okay, well, this all sounds great, go ahead and go, you know, talking about voice over IP, you have that moment of stunned uh, silence where you go, okay, uh, um, okay, what, well, um, Okay, you know, you have to kind of think through what, like, what's this mean? Where do I put the servers? That that kind of thing. All of that hits you all at once, and that's what this nugget's about: is preparing you for the okay, let's go. How do you model? How do you design your network for call manager? Well, let's start off with the simplest model to deploy, and that's going to be the single site call processing model. You've got all of your call manager servers deployed in one location, and when I say location, that could be a multi-story building. It could be one. You know, physical building could be a couple buildings connected with high speed fiber, but it's all the same geographical region. Essentially, it's all one campus network. Now, in your servers, they're all clustered together. You got one database and you designate these servers using a feature called call manager groups to say, well, this one's a primary, this one's a secondary, and this one's a tertiary for, you know, one group of phones. And maybe a second group of phones uses this one as the primary, this one as the second. You see what I mean? So, so you can uh, load balance them around to where, uh, you're, you're not having one server that's you know taking all the load and these other ones are sitting here idle and each server is specced out to a whatever phone number of phones it can support you know the bigger the server the more phones so you could say you know each one of those servers maybe supports a thousand phones per server all incoming calls and outgoing calls go to the PSTN now why is that there's no other offices <laughs> we don't we don't need the WAN like now now keep in mind that PSTN could be a traditional T1 line it could be some analog FXO ports you know which give you one line per call you know just the normal analog home connections that you are used to seeing you could just put a bunch of those I've seen that plenty of times or you may have talked with this carrier and gotten them to work with you on a SIP trunk connection now, a SIP trunk is kind of the next generation uh, phone connection to where you could, you know, maybe get your internet connection from, you know, some carrier. Let's just say there's Sprint, right? Uh, so Sprint says, okay, well, we'll give you, uh, you know, a 10 megabit per second internet connection. Uh, and we'll also allow you to run your SIP trunk over there with quality of service to where we will carry your phone calls as well. We will be your PSTN carrier. You'll pay us long distance and all that kind of stuff. And they provide all your incoming and outgoing phone service without needing any kind of traditional or legacy connections. I would say the best thing about this kind of setup is that you don't have to worry about many codecs. We'll talk about all the codecs specifically in a nugget dedicated to them, but the most universal codec of all is G711. It's the direct equivalent to the old world audio, which is 64 kilobits per second. That's the actual audio that gets put in the packet. Now you got all the headers like IP, MAC address, all that, you know, network data link layer, etc. So usually you end up with a packet, uh, consu well, not a packet, but a conversation on Ethernet consumed consuming about 80 kilobits per second, uh, which is not as efficient as the old world, which only consumes 64, but come on. I mean, we're looking at our switches that are, what, 100 meg for older ones, 1,000 meg for a modern switch to the, to the end user, and you're talking 80K? nothing you know it's a drop in the bucket so we don't have to worry about compression or anything like that we have good high quality audio that translates right out to anybody because everybody supports G711 now as that single site grows you might decide to move into a centralized call processing model that means you still have your single site so envision this this is our single site model uh, but then we start getting some remote offices that are you know they start fairly small maybe you you know you started in Arizona and you expanded to Texas right so you got an office just an executive suite with a couple phones for somebody and maybe that grew into you know 20 30 40 phones uh, as as that remote office grew well that's still not enough to justify putting a full call manager deployment there. I mean, this is expensive. <laughs> Not to down on Cisco, but they make a pricey product. Uh, so you don't want to just start throwing call manager clusters everywhere unless you got the cash to do that. So in this environment, the remote phones are supported by the central cluster. So these guys don't have a call manager, right? They actually go over the WAN and register to that cluster right there. So it makes administration really easy because they're still using the same database and all that but one of the things you really need to think about is SRST stands for survivable remote site telephony that means this router can be equipped that if the WAN connection goes down it's still able to support these phones that's a big deal 
right? The WAN connection does go down occasionally for, for organizations. You don't want your phone system going with it. So SRST allows this router to be a kind of call manager. It's actually a lightweight version of Call Manager Express. Uh, and it can get these people at least to the PSTN. Now, can you get rid of your PSTN connections at the remote office? Eh, maybe. Scary. Uh, the big reason that we even have them in the first place is for emergency calling. In America, we call that 911 calls. Uh, so if, if the WAN link is down, somebody can still call 911 one it comes out here also not all locations are updated to where 911 has the ability to detect calls going across the land what i mean is let's say somebody in here calls 911 and you don't have a psdn connection at that location they're going to go over the wan and then shoop come out here well you don't want emergency trucks showing up in arizona and texas burns to the ground you know what i mean that's that's really not good so so uh, that's why we usually have at least one analog line maybe you dedicate it just for P for uh, emergency calls and uh, and and you know situations where the wan link is down so that's why I suggest a PSTN and WAN connection at each site. Now, once you move into multiple sites, now it doesn't get as simple on the codec side of things. G729 is a compressed, a good codec to use between sites. G729 consuming 8 kilobits per second. That's right. Buy now. 8 kilobits per second. In the actual audio, you know, add all your headers on there. And you're probably around, you know, 16 to 24 kilobits per second or so, depending on what kind of network you're going over. But that's really good. So if bandwidth is a consideration, not that it always is these days because WAN links are so fat with the amount of bandwidth they support, uh, that's where your compressed codecs can really save you. Now, eventually, that little remote office grows and grows and grows to the point where you've got a few hundred phones there. Now it's like, okay, er, you know, no more across the WAN deal. We've got a full call manager cluster uh, for that location as well. Now, once you move into that kind of environment, now you're managing multiple databases. So this is database one, this is database two, completely separate set of extensions, you know, completely separate set of administration. You don't have any kind of replication going between these two, right? So initially, these two won't even know each other exists. Let's say over here is one XXX extensions, and over here is two XXX extensions. You know, like this is 1001, you get the idea, right? So, so I need to configure this database, this call manager cluster, to even know this one exists. So I set up uh, what's known as a trunk. Uh, between sites, an inner cluster trunk that says, I want to communicate from this cluster to here, so I'm going to use that trunk anytime somebody dials the one XXX extensions, but now we're getting to dial plans and all that, but that's that's the kind of thing that we're going to look at. Now, our goal is to use the WAN as our primary communication path. Why? No long distance, cost effective, we can use compression again over that WAN link, whereas the PSTN usually doesn't support a compression. It's always going to be G711, so you don't get that bandwidth savings. Um, you will want some kind of independent WAN bandwidth control. Once you split into multiple clusters, essentially, there's no one able to watch this link. Now, previously, on that, that centralized model where you had the phones over here being managed by one set of, of call measures, this, this call measure could track that WAN bandwidth because it was in control of these phones. But since these guys no longer control these phones, you have to have some kind of independent uh, WAN bandwidth source. It could be the routers. There's some basic settings you could do on the routers. Uh, you can also set up something known as an H323 uh, gatekeeper or a SIP proxy, same same kind of goal, uh, which is essentially a device not controlled by either one of these databases. And its job is to watch the WAN link to make sure you don't run out of bandwidth. Because if you run out of bandwidth, it's a bad thing, right? Not just one call uh, gets bad quality, all the calls at the same time. That's, that's just not good. So we want a device that's able to watch that. I think that this really represents the future of networks. The reason why is, I mean, right now I'm talking one organization, but down the road, I mean, the PSTN is like, whoa, you know, it's gone. Everybody's connected to this one WAN connection. We'll probably call it the Internet 2, right? Everything's IPv6. I'm getting to my conspiracy theory. I'm not going to go there, but you get where this is going, right? To where someday there is no PSTN. Everybody communicates. Over one gigantic internet network where quality of service is gone worldwide, this doesn't even have to be the same company anymore. So that's where things are going. 
Now there is one more model to throw out there, and you might have been thinking about this on your own, and that is clustering over the WAN. You might, might have been thinking, well, is it possible to put, say, the publisher at one site and maybe a database subscriber at the other site to where you've got one database uh, replicating between the two, and now you just you know configure your extensions, like 1001, 2001, you don't need anything special because they're all in one database. The answer is, yes, you can do that, sort of. Uh, the beauty of it is you do have a single point of administration. Changes here affect these phones, and I mean, it's very, very easy to handle a network like this. Um, and you get all of your features, like you could have shared lines over a WAN connection where, you know, for instance, uh, you know, a call comes into 1001 and it rings both 1001s. I mean, there, there's a lot that you're able to do with your features. The big consideration that you have is this does have tight requirements, and I would say this one kills it for a lot of people. Round trip delay. Of 40 milliseconds. Now, 40, that, that's what it needs to keep the database in sync is a 40 millisecond delay. So if you're talking, you know, in America, coast to coast, like California to New York, it's like game over. You're not going to be able to get that kind of delay just because of the sheer physical distance that you have to travel. Um, just, now, just to put that in perspective, high quality audio, which people are like, oh man, we got to really tune our network. High quality voice over IP calls have a recommendation of 150 milliseconds or less one way delay. Not, not, not round trip, one way. Like I have to get from here to there in 150 milliseconds, not here, there, and back. And, th and so that, you know, so really comparing that to 20 milliseconds is what that would be since it's uh, going one way. That's a really tight restriction. So what kind of environment is this? Number one, sites are close together. Number two, they have high speed connectivity. So you're probably talking about Metro Ethernet fiber, which I will say is becoming more and more common all over the place, uh, but it's not in all areas yet. Four different models from Cisco. This should allow you to design a voice over IP network with CUCM for any size, from the smallest office all the way to a worldwide enterprise class network of any size using a distributed call processing model. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.